Okay, thank you, Kingsley. So yes, as I said, optimization of seed coating for native grasses. So the introduction is a bit redundant because already been said many times during this conference is how hard it is to deal with native seeds. Hard to collect, very challenging to process, tough to germinate, and if you try some seed production, it also can be very challenging. No surprise that the cost for these seeds tend to be quite high, and more often than not, as Paul just showed in his report, is hard to find the seeds in the diversity and quantity that is required for uh, landscape scale restoration. And usually, once you get these seeds, I've seen happening both in Europe, but also in Australia, is that once you got them, the way they are deployed in the landscape is usually by hand broadcasting or mechanical broadcasting, which results in lots of seed wastage. And even when more advanced uh, techniques for sowing are used, there's still the problem of low establishment rates for these seeds. Usually, if you're lucky, you'll get 10% of your seed back in plants. In a way, we just need to get smarter in the way we use our native seeds. Uh, the approach I had taken to, to face this problem was looking into agriculture and see what has been developed by the crop industry to improve their performance. Remember, if you talk like canola or wheat, they expected to germinate and emerge at about 95, 98%. So why we got so little? And one of the technology I worked on is a seed coating. Uh, seed coating is quite simple to explain. You just get a seed and you put some stuff around it. And there's different three kinds of seed coating. One is film coating, where you just apply a, a thin layer of material around the seed. Then you've got encrusting, when you bulk it up a bit, but the shape of the seed is still evident. And then you've got seed pelleting, when you can no longer detect the original shape of the seed and it looks more like a peel or a sphere. Um, there's different reasons why this is performed. The main reason is uh, to modify the shape, the size, the weight, the density of the seed in a way to make them more homogeneous and easier to handle and run through and make a nice system for sowing or for the logistic. And the other big reason is to use this uh, artificial coating as a way to carry some beneficial compounds. Uh, the most commonly employed in agriculture are protectants like herbicide or pesticide, but you can add micronutrients, for example, or you can add um, soil adjuvants or phytopromoters. There's different range of technologies to perform seed coating. The three most common ones you can see here are in, reported in the industry as fluidized bed for film coating, rotostato and rotating pan for encrusting and pelleting. Um, we have run a comprehensive a review of the scientific literature and some of the major companies performing seed coating. And what emerged was well, that in the scientific literature, more than half, half of the publication did not report the materials or method that they used because those the seed coating was outsourced to private companies. They would perform the coating, return the seed, without telling what they've done, because it was a trade secret. And this lie a big, pro a big problem in the technology, that is this disconnect between industry and academia. Industry, the crop industry, is way ahead of academia, but they do not provide information, no protocols, they don't publish, so we, can know, we don't know how to perform seed coating. So that's why, with some colleagues, we've uh, developed this uh, protocol development tool, which is like a practical tool that guides you step by step to perform uh, seed coating on your own native seeds. And Kiraj is going to talk about this in the presentation after mine. So going back to my project, I decided to work on four grass species that are very common in the temper temperate southern part of Australia and are used for pasture, but also for its vegetation and restoration. So the first question I have, does seed coating actually improve the handling? And to test that, I'll try through this uh, seeding, small seeding machine. Uh, you can see on the left-hand side, we've got Microlina stipoides, or wallaby grass, run through this machine untreated. And on the right-hand side, I've got it coated. And you can simply see how much easier it is for the seeds to run through. And so after 10 meters of simulated sowing, this is the difference. So yes, the answer is yes, it does improve handling. But what about germination? We've tested germination, adding some germination adjuvants, and uh, optimal condition, there was no difference. However, when tested at a warmer condition and with low water potential and in the field, we saw uh, quite commonly it was detrimental the use of seed coating on seed. So what's the point of coating seeds if it doesn't let the seed germinate and emerge? So we had to go back and see what was done. And what was done on these pieces was to put the coat or encrusting on top of existing fluoride. And then start thinking, what if the combination of the fluoride and the coating is detrimental for the sea emergence? Why don't I just remove the fluoride altogether? 
The first thing to try, though, is to see if the removing the fluoride has some effect on germination. Which I did, and turned out that fertile species removing the fluoride was actually beneficial, so it improved germination speed and final germination. But for two other species, it didn't have every significant effect, so it means that we can go ahead and clean those seeds to the caryopsis level. Other problem was that this is quite time consuming, especially if you do it manually, so we want to look in a way to do it more effectively. So we tested three different methods. One is manual for control, flash flaming, and sulfuric acid digestion. Uh, at the scale we tried in the lab, the one that proved to be most time effective was acid digestion. And when we tested for germination across the four species, acid digestion proved to be the best also in improving germination. So we decided to go ahead and clean our seed using the methods and then start to apply the code. So we got clean seeds, we applied the code, and then we tested again for germination. And at this stage, we can test lab germination in the, in the lab in the first row. For two species, was actually improved when we put the coating on compared to the clean control. And it was improved in one case for emergence. While in the other case, there was no significant difference, no detriment. So it's a good sign that, yes, probably the interaction between the fluoride and the, and the coat was the problem. Removing the fluoride, now we can go ahead and do the coating. And now that we know that, we try to put some extra stuff into the coating and use it to carry, for this case, a particular compound, which is aspirin, or well, the natural form of aspirin, salicylic acid. Uh, salicylic acid is a plant hormone which is known to deliver stress resistance when it is uh, given to the seed or the plant. Uh, it delivers resistance under abiotic, abiotic stress condition. However, it's very rarely been tested on seed coating and there's not clear the effects of uh, salicylic acid on germination of emergence. So the first question is, can salicylic acid be delivered through seed coating? And to do so, we compare seeds that were either imbibed in salicylic acid or encrusted with it. Then we want to check if salicylic acid does improve germination under optimal condition in the lab or with reduced water availability, and also on the field to see germination and emerging in the field at same advantage for seeds with salicylic acid. And lastly, we want to see if salicylic acid improves survival and growth. So looking at the effects of salicylic acid on germination and emergence, we can see in this case that for uh, astrostypa and retidosperma, usually there wasn't much difference, there wasn't much effect of it. It was a positive effect one time in astrostypa and one time for microlina, while it was detrimental the other times for microlina. The reason for that is probably due to the amount of salicylic acid we've used. I've seen in the literature that salicylic acid is, uh, does respond, so if we reduce the amount of salicylic acid, this might reduce this detrimental effect that we see here. And when we check uh, for the germination in the field and emergence in the field, we see for most of the cases that there's no difference, and one case was detrimental, probably for the same reason. So there was not a clear effect, sometimes positive, sometimes negative, usually neutral, but it's still up in the air if salicylic acid can improve germination emergence, at least on these species. But then we went on and test the survival. To test survival, we've done with two different experiments. The one you see on the left, we've got a plot, which is half a meter per side, and we've got 100 seeds sown in there. After 10 weeks, we remove all of the seedlings apart from 10 seedlings, which were spaced at least five centimeters apart in a way to remove competition between uh, seedlings. The second experiment instead was so 100 seeds on a line and then let them grow for 50 weeks without removing them from competition. So in both scenarios, with competition removed and with a competition, we can see that in one case there was no clear uh, effect, although there was still an uh, advantage of using salicylic acid, but was not significant. In all other cases, survival was improved using salicylic acid. And uh, then we checked for growth as well in the plots where we actually removed co competition. And we can see that in two, in two species there was no clear effect of salicylic acid in growth, but for microlinus statoides there was a significant improve both in height and uh, dry biomass. Uh, for the plants that were treated with salicylic acid. So growth was somehow improved, but not as much as survival. And also then we analyzed to see which was the best way of delivering salicylic acid. Was it through imbibition or was it through encrusting? And it turns out there's no significant difference, meaning that yes, seed coating can be used and does provide the same effect of imbibition to deliver salicylic acid. So to sum it all up, uh, seed coating can improve seed handling. Uh, but the interaction of fluorides and seed coat is detrimental. Um, removing the fluoride does improve germination, 
And the best way to remove the fluoride, at least for these species, is the use of salicylic acid. Uh, moreover, seed coating with salicylic acid improves plant survival. And remember, in this case, the, the improving survival might not be that great. We've improved probably of 5%. But this is just using one active ingredient. You can actually put more stuff on that coating. If you've got problems of um, uh, water repellency, like shown yesterday, then you can put some... Uh, uh, surfactant agents to solve the problem. You can put micronutrients. There's so many other things that could be loaded on the code that could help improve those numbers. But then there's a natural question that I usually get asked when I talk about this thing. Is it worth it? Isn't it too expensive to go through cleaning the seeds, coating the seeds, putting aspirins on the seeds? And the answer is probably a matter of scale. So if we grow up this market, if we really start using these seeds in the quantity that we need, at that stage, yes, it's a big difference to have like a 10% success rate and a 30% success rate given the cost of this seed to start with. And with this ends my talk. If you've got any question. Interesting. So the, the issue around getting them through the seeder, yep. that, that the seeding approach that you, you use is a traditional seeding uh, sort of mechanism that we've always had trouble with with grasses. Over here on the East States, we've developed a new type of seeding uh, machine that will sow any species, no matter what the uh, attachment is. So that completely gets around the need to coat for the seeding equipment. So that's, that's one thing aside, just to sort of let you know that. But the issue I have around this other stuff, around, um, say, improving germination outcomes with, a, with the acid or whatnot, there is so many questions now being asked of us around creating selection pressures, whether they're in wild harvest or in production and all these things. Are we just going down the same path in breaking dormancy, for example, or creating you know, higher uh, germination across a, a seed lot when some of that seed lot might have an inherent, uh, you know, sort of trait that held off germination for, you know, a certain set of conditions that we're not, not knowing about. So are we just, on one hand, saying don't over-select, but on another hand, saying let's select? Yeah, so I'll try to answer both the questions. So the first one about the equipment. I was aware of that equipment, so I was presenting this more than the general term. But still, I actually haven't seen it working. I'd love to see that. But what I've seen with some more advanced equipment they've used in Europe, even if you kind of overcome a bit these pro problems, uh, improving the, the equipment or mixing it with something else to improve the flow, there's still a bit of difference that it's created in there because of the density of the seed. So especially if you've got seed mix, not single species, they always tend to separate based on the density of the seed. And this is something that coating could overcome a bit. But we can talk more about that because, as I say, I don't know that machine in detail. So maybe it does solve this problem. But the coating is meant also as a way to deliver compounds. And grasses maybe are not the best example for improved logistics. But even you go in very tiny seeds, that's something uh, Encourage is working on. That's where you can get some real improvement out of pelleting. Uh, the other question was about um, selection. the selection. That question is still up in the air. I have lots of discussion with people in the States about the same issue. So oh, what about the bad edging of a species to whenever the situation is there? But we need to remember that we are putting these seeds in a non-natural system. It's a degraded area, and in some situation, we need to outperform the weeds, so to have them germinate as quickly as we can in the first, in the first few weeks. So that's why we're pushing very hard at the beginning. But as I said, it depends on the environment, it depends on the restoration project. But having this tool in our toolkit can help us eventually work this detail around it. Because if you want to push them all at the first time, then we can do it. If you want to delay them, you can actually use seed coating that does exactly the same. So you could seed coating that delays germination, and you can do that on some of your seeds and some are not. So it's just a matter of what we want and how we interpret those problems. <laughs> 